Wow. I'm not exactly sure how you follow that. Yeah, I'm not sure. But here, here's one of the things I do know for sure. Your brain's connected to your butt. <laughs> I want everybody to stand up. You have five seconds to hug the person next to you. Hey. Enough love. Enough love. There's the there's there's the risk in doing something like that is everybody gets involved in their hugs and we lose track of time. So let's get back to our seats. All right. So uh, this this beautiful disciple wife of mine, my helper. Uh, we, get, we were asked to talk about rise up and shepherd the people. Yeah. So what does that mean? Well, first of all, Acts 20 verse 28 says, Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. You know, the focus of shepherding is to keep the saved saved. Yeah, and to have it put another way, the evangelist brings them in the front door, the shepherds keep them going out the back. From. Okay? From the back door. You know, we, our, our goal is to help keep the saved saved. We know what the leaders do. We know what the Davises do. We, we know what the Vichikinis do. We know what the Specklins do. Now you know what your Bible talks leaders do. Amen? Amen. But the question has been, what do shepherds do? <laughs> well, you see, despite all that leadership... There's still gaps. Because, let's, let's be realistic. You know, you, you may have heard the phrase, trying to, to herd cats. <laughs> okay? You know, and, and, and let's be honest, there are times, Megan put up a great post, you know, she teaches fourth grade students, and you, you hear the phrase about having all your ducks in a row. Yeah. Yes. And she posted the sign and says, there are no ducks today. I don't know where the rows are at. They're all squirrels and they're having a rave. <laughs> And let's be realistic, there are times because we're dealing with people that there are those moments that they seem totally out of control. And so part of our role is to help restore some control. But we want to tell you a little bit about our shepherding uh, couples here and have Pam step in here and share a little bit. So let me tell you about those that are filling in the gaps. Now we have a luxury here in New York City that we have three shepherding couples. It's a and um, you know, one of the other amazing things is how God chose them. God chose them. But he started training us probably 25 years ago. Because the Henshaws and the O'Donnells met 25 years ago in Syracuse. Lisa and the O'Donnells met almost 20 years ago in Syracuse. And Rishi, Rishi was our roommate before there was a Lisa and Rishi. And um, so God has been preparing this for us for this role for a very long time. And I feel great comfort in that. You know, sometimes when I question my ability, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Like Char Charmaine said, God chose me in this role. But let me tell you, did you know that three of our shepherds were converted in the campus? Wow! So they understand that life disciple balance and they can help your people as well. Did you know that three of our shepherds have been on at least one mission team? Hmm. They, had them out, they know about going anywhere, giving up everything awesome. to serve God. But they also know the, the, how important missions are. Um, did you know that one of our shepherds has served outside of the U.S.? We've all served in the U.S., but some, one hasn't. Did you know that combined, there are over 70 years of marriage? Wow. That is 70 years of submission. Wow. That is 70 years of the wisdom gained and conflict resolution. Come on. You think they can't help you? You know, some of the shepherds, unfortunately, have gone through death of their parents. They understand that pain that comes from not knowing or knowing that your parents aren't going to be there in heaven when you get there. They can help counsel those who are suffering and mourning. You know, sadly, 
Some of our shepherds have gone through broken marriages, and they understand the pain that comes with that. But they understand the healing that can come after that. And the hope for being reunited, or being reunited with a husband or wife. Two of the shepherds, or some of the shepherds, have... um, I lost my place. Hmm. Where was I? Huh? Oh, yeah. Several, many of our shepherds have professional careers, so they also know that work-life balance. The corporate world, the healthcare world, and, you know, the restraints sometimes you have and the responsibilities you have, being able to still seek the kingdom first in spite of whatever your job in the world is because your job here is to seek and save the lost. So these are just some of the talents and experiences that the shepherds bring to this church. It's amazing. And we are, and I've heard many people say that the shepherds are the secret weapon. Yes. So how do you, as a Bible talk leaders, use a secret weapon? Come on. Teach us. Let's go, Mark. All right, that's what we're here to do, here to talk about today. You know, uh, Mark Hare, a few years ago, coined the phrase, shepherd powers. <laughs> whatever that is. And whatever that may be. But it's something that I think was described very well in a book. Uh, it's, uh, the author is W. Philip Kelly, and it's called A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23. And he looks at this 23rd Psalm as from the perspective of actually being a shepherd. You know, one of the things about sheep, our sheep, the people, the flock that you lead, that we want to help you shepherd... And all of us sitting in this room, you know, Jesus calls us sheep. Very now, nice if, you, if you look at the rank of intelligence of animals, Come on. <laughs> I'll just leave it there. Sheep are, <laughs> sheep are not at the top of the list. I'll just put it that way. Okay, sheep are the ones that, you know, they, they, they'll get turned over on their back and not how to upright themselves. And if they stay there too long, they die. Yes. Okay, so in a physical sense, it, it, Mr. Kelly would go out and they would, he would pick up the sheep, put it up on its feet, and make sure that it would stay alive. Now, if you have a disciple that's just flat on their back, <laughs> get up. Tell them, get up. Unless it's spiritually flat on their back. And that's where we step in. You know, shepherds step in when one of the flock is struggling, when they're spiritually on their backs. But you need to let us know that before it becomes recognized. You know, one of the things that we know about people, we know about disciples, is when they decide to fall away, that decision is made long before they actually do it. Yeah. They, they start having heart issues, they have struggles over all sorts of things, and long before they leave, they're gone yeah. Yeah. in their heart. When you start recognizing a, a, the signs of a disciple that's struggling, in distress, whatever term you want to use, give us a call. Yeah. Because it's a whole lot easier to get on the front end and fix it, or help them work through it, than it is to try to bring them back after they've left. You know, sometimes people, uh, and and we've had a few instances of this recently, unfortunately, where people are are standing at the fence, and the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. They're looking at the world and saying, how much better is that for me than where I'm at? We don't have time today, but if I could tell you where I was at when I became a disciple almost 32 years ago, that grass isn't so green. I'm much happy, despite all the, all the work, everything you have to go through being a disciple, it's a whole lot greener on this side than you can ever. Can you know, he call us up when, when someone needs some help with life skills? Maybe you have a brother that's struggling with budgeting, doesn't know how to keep a checkbook. You know, I, my, I use my card, you know, or, or the classic one back in the day, and I'm dating myself here. I got checks left, there must be cash in the bank. Yeah, I'm just dating myself. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Nobody understands. Someone needs help with life skills. One of the things that Pam and I have noticed, and as we have invited people over to our house, there's they're always thrilled with the hospitality. Well, let's help them learn hospitality so they can do those same things. When uh, during premarital and marital counseling, you know, we've got dating and engaged couples in the church. Amen. That's a sign of a healthy church. But one of the things that happens, and, and we'll be addressing this, Pam and I have been asked to lead the newlyweds group. So any of you that are married 24 we're months excited. or less, we're going to be having some time with you guys. The Kikellis are trying to sneak in. They yeah, yeah, well, we're not going to be real stiff on that. Anyway. Um, and then, so premarital and marital counseling. But then the last part is before 
Church discipline is needed. Before we have to bring that disciple before the church, call us. Yeah. Let's, let's get it resolved as quickly as we can. Amen. So specifically, what do we do and it makes all this work? We're going to share back and forth here a little bit. Can you read my page, John? Yeah, sure. Okay. So one of the things I think is key in all these that Mike just listed is that we have to be able to develop relationships with the people in the different Bible talks. Yeah. Mike and I are in a great Bible talk where we're the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on! And we're starting to develop relationships with these people that we have never been together with before. And I think that that's the same. So if there are places that you need to pull in the Francos or the Henshaws or the O'Donnells, let us help, let us help you by starting to build relationships with them. Amen. One of the things that um, has been recommended by um, central leadership, the shepherds, the untalans that kind of lead all the shepherding couples in the movement, is that we put together new member orientation. How perfect is that? Come on. We help these new disciples, we dis develop their relationships so we can help them as they make this journey. Amen. Making announcements, putting together the plan. Wow. Counting the cost, helping to count the cost, being involved in a, a study before light and darkness so that we know these people and they're gonna feel comfortable sharing their lives with us. We can, re I just had some talks with some sisters in my Bible talk this week about their contribution. Having those tough talks, but the only way I can have those talks is because I have a relationship with them. Not in the Kate Kelly's Bible talk, in my other Bible talk that I'm a part of, but it's having those relationships so you're able to say the things that you need to say. Amen. All right. So after somebody's baptized, hey, we're happy to step in and give you a hand there. You know, doing the follow-up studies, you know, the, the first 40 days, and, and those are available. Make sure that anybody gets baptized gets that pamphlet and we'll help walk through it. The Deep Conviction Series at Quiet Times for next 13 weeks. Now, it, it's interesting that, you know, that, that's the first three months that they're around as a disciple. And one of the things, you know, any of us that, that have raised kids, yes. we know that their personalities are pretty well set in the first three yep. years. Okay, so if we can set a strong foundation in the first three months, yeah. we have a great chance to yeah, keep this disciple around for a lifetime. Oh yeah, not just us, but anybody can. Um, you know, working through and, and helping them understand the persecution study. I know we do that with them before they're baptized, and, and sometimes it's, uh, you know, sadly we had a, a, a brother who was baptized in January and was gone by the end of the month because he didn't fully understand persecution. If it, it, it's, we do the study, but sometimes there's the subtle persecution. Sometimes there's that, you know, and I appreciate what Charmaine had to say about, you know, Mom, I'm going to the ministry. Why do you want to do that? You know? <laughs> I, we don't have time for the whole story, but I was thrown out of my dad's house for going to Syracuse to tramp to plant a church. Wow. Okay? More, we, we can talk about that. It's more it about that. It turned out good. It turned out good in the long run. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a study that Joe Willis put out called Falling Away, Don't Do It. Yeah, we, it, it's straight ahead, straightforward, and we can talk to you about it and help through. And the other thing is, you know, when we have particularly our campus groups, when they go home for the holidays, you know, they have that long Thanksgiving break, they have that long Christmas break. Uh, when we were up in Syracuse, we had a, a ministry up at Fort Drum, and these guys would deploy for 30 days every year. And it was amazing. The, the first five days, I get daily phone calls from all the guys. And my phone was just ringing all the time. The second week, less. The fourth week, nothing. The first week back, we were with them every night, strengthening them again. So it's important that we set them up for success when they're on their time away. It's important that we put these studies together and make sure they get uh, contributed to them so that they have a chance to stay strong through the holidays. Another thing that we can do is help them celebrate. That's my favorite part. <laughs> so celebrate spiritual birthdays. You know, Marion... Campbell, her first spiritual birthday is tomorrow. So we put together a video on our group chat for the Sophisticated Soul Sip Sisters to celebrate with her. How cool is that going to be when she opens that up tomorrow and she sees all the videos of all the women that love her and are part of Sophisticated Soul Sip Sisters? That's what we need to celebrate. Milestones. Uh, like... Mike's been a disciple, oh, sorry. Mike's been a disciple for almost 32 years. That's a huge, that's huge. Some of you in this room are 32, right? We want to be able to engage with professionals. 
Tina and I are nurses. We want to engage with the, the nursing community. There are other professional men and women out there that have the same talents, Shivanti as well, that we can engage with. Mike is an administrator. Um, is that what they call you? I, they, call, <laughs> they call me many things, but... <laughs> but we have professionals. We each have our own community. Engage us with those men and women that you're studying with. Because we understand, like I said, the work-life balance and to still live, give sacrificially of our time and our energy when we have demands of our professional workplace. One of the things that's very dear to me, and I've studied with several women who have non-Christian husbands, and is to draw those husbands in. You know what, we had Marion's husband with us the day after Amanda and Emeka's wedding. He came to our house and the goal was for him to go out to dinner. He sat down, he goes, I'm not going anywhere. This place feels good. I'm like, amen. We have set a place where he feels comfortable. And we pulled in Travis, we pulled in Luke, and they had their own little men's corner over there. But that's what we want to do. We want to pull in those non-Christian spouses. Use the shepherds for that. And I, I want to go back to celebrations for just a minute. Because today, February 19th, oh, yeah. is a very special day. It was 31 years ago today yes. that she agreed to be my wife. Oh. All right. That last point here that we're going to do, and then we, we intentionally, we talked it over with Aaron, we're going to keep our presentation short because we want to open it up for questions to you guys. Uh, but the last thing here, uh, and of course, it falls to me because we talk about reporting, you know, <laughs> making sure that the Bible talk leaders do their weekly reports, your follow up studies, all that. You know, I, I, I don't want to sound like a threat. I don't want anybody to see my number pop up on their phone and go, oh, oh it's Mike. What did I forget? <laughs> From time to time, you'll get those calls. We all do. Um, my, my ringtone on my phone for Luke when it calls, uh, it's a Star Wars quote. As Han Solo is saying, I've got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> What's Aaron's? Oh, well, well Aaron's is C-3PO. Um, <laughs> human, human cyborg relations. Um, and, my, and just in, in full disclosure, Megan's ringtone is R2-D2. Um, Oh, that's, that's what I should do. I should, yeah, I should put Chewbacca on. Here. Thank you for the suggestion. But, uh, you know, we're, I, I, w I will follow up and make sure that, that, you know, if you have questions about the reports, if you're not sure how to report something, I'll work with Aaron and John and the leaders to make sure that the reports are done and accurate. Because that's the best way for us to keep consistency in the kingdom, how we report, what we report, and when we, when we report it. I think that that reporting also helps us to keep eyes. We may not know what's going on in your Bible talk, but we all know that contribution and lack of contribution is one of the first signs that people are starting to look toward that fence and look over into the world. So if we know about those things, we can help. Yeah. But we need those signs from all of you, not just contribution, but other things, so that we can help. Sorry. Amen. So that, that wraps it up for us. We're going to open up for questions, and John's going to come up and, and MC that part. But thank you all for your attention. Again, grab any of us. We, we somehow all wound up at the same table. It must We're be that, friends. That's shepherd powers, I guess. <laughs> but uh, please, please, please feel free to come over, ask questions. Let's get engaged. We want to support you and make sure your Bible talks are successful for God. Amen? Thank you for your time.